I need a new spark plug. Well, I never did like sweeping anyway. Oh, Jeff, for the love of Pete, how can I write a book with you around? The idea of a great big tough bird like you taking a vacation to write a book. Sort of sissy, if you ask me. Listen, Jeff. When I hired you years ago, you were just a down and out prize fighter. Wait a minute. I've been down, never knocked out in my life. Well, for years. I've allowed you to share my adventures. And now you're like a brother to me. And occasionally, I've saved your life. Oh, don't mention it. And you have saved mine. Oh, that was nothing. Well, now, I'm about to reward you with what you have long deserved. Oh, yeah? What with? A poconut Irish panio. Oh, yeah? Well, you just try it, and I'll wrap those legs of yours around your neck and tie them on a bow knot. I'd say, if it wasn't for breaking up Judge Hammond's hope that he was good enough to allow us to use while he was in Florida, I'd clean up this room with you. I resent that. This room is clean. Oh, what's the use? I suppose it is silly for me to try to write about my adventures, but what I've started, I've started, and I'm going to finish. Ah, uh, no kidding. Do you think you can finish it before your vacation's over, Bill? Yes, if I'm not constantly interrupted by you and the neighbors. We have got neighbors, haven't we? Yeah. Over there's the Randalls, and they're all steamed up about a famous detective living next door to them. How do they know who I was? <laughs> I took care of that. I told all the servants. Well, speak of the devil, here comes the old gent from next door himself. Mm -hmm. Well, tell him I'm out. Tell him I'm sick. Tell him anything, but get rid of it. Never mind. You leave it to me. Is Mr. Holt in? Yes, sir. He's in, and he's very lonely, sir. Oh, yes. He'll be tickled to death to see you. Hi, Joe. Old old fellow. I'm awfully glad to see you again. Uh, again? Yes, of course. I'm Reuben Marshall. I was at the dinner that they gave for you when you finished up the Macaulay kidnapping case. Oh, oh, yes. Uh, won't you sit down? Oh, thanks. Oh, and Gallifrey, eh? <laughs> well, I've been taking a few lessons myself. <laughs> you know, Judge Hammond has us all believing that you're the greatest detective in the world. Uh, a small world, you know. Yeah. Well, he's a fine gentleman, the judge. Uh, incidentally, he has the finest whiskey that I ever poured down my throat. Uh, <clears throat> your man will find it on the third shelf on the left in the cellar. Oh, Mr. Marshall, this is Mike Jeffries, my very able assistant, yeah. and Jack of all trades. Glad to know you. Uh, Jeff, see if you can find that whiskey and uh, make it into highballs with plenty of ice. And plenty of whiskey. <laughs> hey, what, what, what's all this? I, I'm on vacation writing a book. Uh, <laughs> I don't believe you. I bet you're working on a case in this neighborhood, like a taxi man out for a drive on his holiday. No, I'm not working on a case. Oh, well, I'm glad to hear that. Hey, come along. I'm going to take you golfing. No, thank you. I, I really can't spare the time. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, then I'll have to go with Muriel Randall, my nephew's wife, you know. It's too bad. Yeah, she's a handful, Muriel. <laughs> Welcome, stranger. Well, cheerio. What in your eye? You know, Muriel was divorced from Camel Snowden before she married Harry. Big money settlement, too. And she went after Harry Randall hot and heavy, got him, and drove him crazy. No, women will do that. Oh, I mean, Harry's really crazy. He's in the sanitarium ten miles up the river. That's unfortunate. Mm, it's a bad situation. She still lives with us. And now, with poor Harry in the sanitarium, she's gone after Tom, his brother. Oh, that is unfortunate. Yes, it's about to drive Ann out of her mind, too. Ann? Is your daughter? No, no, no. Ann's my sister and their mother. Oh. <laughs> uh, we're a strange family. <laughs> Skeletons rattling in all the closet till you can't sleep at night. <laughs> all on account of Muriel. <laughs> and the strange part of it is that Anne is simply wild about her. 
A door, sir. Well, 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 I've got to run along. Gary is waiting for me. Well, I'm sorry I can't join you, but I just must finish this book. Hmm. Well, it's comforting to have a detective so close, anyhow. <laughs> Hello, Muriel. Let me introduce... Hello, darling. I'm Muriel. Uh, so I judge. I suppose old Father Time here gave you a big load of me. Well, rather good size, I'd say. Well, just for that, you big bad boy, you go out and wait in the car. I want to talk to Mr. Holt alone. <laughs> so long, Holt. Oh, yes. See you later. I guess you think I'm a pretty bad egg, don't you, darling? Well, I got that general impression. Well, I'll let you in on a little secret. I am. Now, how do you feel? I like spanking you. Oh, please do. I'd love it. Now, don't tempt me. I tempt easily. You don't mean to say detectives are human. Uh, at times. Well, well, this is an age of discovery. Anyhow, what are you doing tonight? Why, writing. Oh, but you're not writing tomorrow night. You're coming over for a party. I mean a social gathering. People, music, bridge, stupid talk, and other modern inventions. Mm, thanks, but... Uh... No, none of that. I never take no for an answer, darling. Especially from men. You probably don't hear it very often. And tomorrow afternoon, I'm picking you up in the Roadster. We'll go places and drink things. Well, we'll see. Uh... Well, goodbye, darling. Until tomorrow. Kiss. Hmm? So long. Huh. None of my business, but you're certainly a fast worker, Bill. Remember, Irishman, you've still got to poke the nose coming. Uh, you know that old bird Marshall's not a bad sort. Quite neighborly, too. No, it's an egg. He's smart. He came around here to find out what I'm doing. You don't need a vacuum cleaner to get the dirt around here. Just pour a couple of drinks to the old man Marshall. Oh, Tommy. Don't you think you're taking unnecessary chances coming here? Well, everybody else is downstairs but us. That's the point. Everybody is downstairs but us. Well, what if they do find out? I wish they would. Muriel, I love you. Why don't you come away with me and we'll be married? Muriel? Quick, Tommy, fix my necklace. Come in. Oh, Muriel. Everybody's downstairs waiting for you. I was just going down. Thanks, Tommy, for helping me with my necklace. You'd better wipe off that lip rouge first. just had to finish one more chapter while I was still alive. Well, come on and get cooled off. I'll introduce everybody first and blacken characters later, okay? Perfect. Let's go. And, may I present Mr. Holt? My mother-in-law, darling, and your host. How do you do? Yeah. And the sweetest, finest woman in all the world. Oh, Muriel. <laughs> I don't deserve her, really, a little siren like me. I believe you. Oh, don't take her seriously, Mr. Holt. She will never grow up. <laughs> <laughs> and this, Mr. Holt, is Campbell Snowden, my ex-husband. I have to know you, Mrs. Snowden. He divorced me, the brute, for very good reasons, but I took him for a quarter of a million on the settlement. <laughs> so, uh, you're the great host. And he's still crazy about me, aren't you, dear? Oh, uh, Tommy, come, come. Mr. Holt, this is little Tommy Randall, kid brother of my current husband. He wants me to divorce Harry and marry him. With my husband and incompetence, Tommy will inherit the family fortune. Oh, Muriel, you mustn't say such things even in fun. Uh, 
Mr. Holt doesn't understand. Well, he ought to. He's a detective. But on vacation. Don't forget that. Hello, Holt. Well, well, if it isn't the old he gossip herself. And you came over. Enjoying yourself? More than you believe. There they are, darling. My maid admirers. All under one tent. The naughty elephant, the big bad wolf, and the innocent little lamb. Come on, I've got to put you in circulation, darling. Excuse me. What did she mean by that remark about divorcing Harry and marrying you? Not a thing. You ought to know Muriel by now. Oh, Campbell, you certainly can't take her seriously. Anyhow, what's it to you? You're not her husband anymore. Tommy, that's enough. All right. Jane Precious, this is Mr. Holt, the nice man I've been saving for you. Jane Maxwell of the Shattered Heart. Well, how do you do, Miss Shattered Heart? That was hardly fair, Muriel. Maybe not, but it's true. You know it isn't. Well, we'll settle it with swords on the field of honor a week from some Wednesday. After all I've read about you, I almost feel I'm in the presence of a supernatural being. Oh, he's human, all right, but you'll find out for yourself. Why, Muriel, please. I should explain, darling, why Jane hates me so charmingly. I stole her sweetie, Harry Randall, right from under her pretty nose. Not that her loss was so great, except uh, financially. You've gone too far. I'm terribly, terribly sorry, Jane. Please forgive me and the gin. Of course. I forgive you. Both. Thanks, darling. Well, I'll run along. You'll be safe with the detective, Jane. Congratulations. You're a brave girl. You certainly can take it. At times, that's the only thing to do. Well, I like you for it. But if you had clawed her at ribbons, I wouldn't have blamed you. <laughs> wouldn't you have arrested me for it? Not while on vacation. <laughs> Oh, here's the coffee, folks. Come and get it. Oh, uh, we don't want coffee. We're too sober now. I have an idea. Let's have some rum coffee. My own private recipe. I've been offered millions for it. Sure, oh. Snowden. That's a horse from another garage. Yeah, trot it out. Yeah. Simpson, bring in everything I need for my famous rum coffee. A big pardon, mm. sir, but we have no rum. What? Simpson, how dare you? Sorry, folks. Rum coffee's off. No rum. You're oh. a rum. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I've got an idea. I'll phone Coletti to bring some Jamaica. Atta, girl. Good, and I'll go with you. No, Tommy. Telephoning Coletti is a woman's work. Put that in your smoking pipe. Oh, bring the rum. Yeah, yeah, bring the rum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, folks, come and get your best down. Want to try, Ella? I'm afraid I know my luck. It's always pretty bad. Let me take you. No, thank you. I think I'll take a whirl at it anyway. No matter what happens, it'll still be the luckiest night of my life. Why do you say that? I just happened to meet a girl named Jane Maxwell. Well, all right, come on, Mr. Detective. We'll see how lucky you are. That's right, Gus. Some Jamaica rum and another present for me. You rotten little chiseler, you're through shaking me down. Gus, you're a dear sweet boy, and you'll bring my little present, or else... You heard me say no, didn't you? Well, that's what I mean. Gussie, darling, there's a famous detective in the house, and he'd love to see some of those little pieces of paper that would pin a couple of nice gooey murders on you. Pipe down, you little idiot. All right, you win. But when I get there, I want to see you alone. Call the garage. Tell them to put a case of Jamaica rum in my roadster. Okay, Chief. All right, folks, everybody get your bets down. All right. Around it goes. And where she stops, nobody knows. Down the little ball. The double O. Five. Oh. All right. Going, going, gone. I'll soon be in the bread line. You better stop for a while, Muriel. All right, folks, put your bets down. Get ready for the next roll. What is it, Simpson? Mr. Coletti has brought the rum. He's waiting to see you. Pardon me, Jane. I want to speak with Mr. Hole alone. Of course. I'm meeting someone in the driveway I want to get rid of as quickly as I can. If I'm not back in a moment or two, come and look for me. 
and rescue the fair maiden in distress? I'm not kidding. All right. Thanks, darling. Gus, you're a darling. Never mind that. You know what I came for. Give them to me. You give me what I ask you to bring, and I don't mean rum. I told you I was through playing Santa Claus to you. But, Gussie, darling, you're just starting. Remember, I've still got what it takes to make you come through. Where have you got that letter and those checks? Right here, where they're safe. Yeah, well, I'll show you how safe they are. Now, stop, give them Gus, to me. Give me those letters. No, I'll never give them. No, you don't, Gus. Thanks, Palsy. Well... Now that the fair maiden in distress has been rescued, what do we play next? Well, let's play hide and seek. Hide your eyes, darling. Huh? Oh. You can look now. The gentleman you see below is none other than Mr. Gus Coletti, favorite distributor of alcoholic entertainment in this community. He also operates a nightclub which enjoys a very evil reputation. We must go sometime. Oh, so you're back in town. I was hoping you'd trade that carnation for a lily. Who is that guy? Pardon me. Mr. Holt, allow me to introduce Mr. Coletti. Mr. Coletti, Mr. Holt. Hi, Mr. Coletti. Won't you join us? Mr. Coletti, Mr. Holt is a well-known detective of that name. You double-crossing little two-timer. Two-timer? Mr. Coletti, you don't know the half of it. You haven't been shooting off your mouth, have you? No, not yet. Well, goodbye, Mr. Coletti. You're leaving. All right, but I'll be back. And when I do, I'll get what I come after. What is this? Oh, I have something that Mr. Coletti would like to get back. But I've found it more to my advantage to keep it. Well, does the lady mean... Uh... Tut, tut, don't say it, Mr. Holder. I'll have to wash your mouth out with some of Snowden's rum coffee. Come on. It's tremendous. It's colossal. In fact, it's not bad. Oh, thank you. Hey, Snowden, if you ever lose your money, you can earn a living inventing new drinks. <laughs> it isn't bad, is it? Oh, I saved this for you. I was afraid it'd all be gone by the time you got back. Thank you, Ann, dear. And you. How do you like it, Muriel? It's perfect. Thank you. Good stuff, Snowden. Fine. Thank you. Hey, everybody, this stuff ought to change our luck. Let's try the wheel again. Good idea. Nobody can lose now. Come on, folks. Let's start. Uh, uh, what's the matter, Tom? Why don't you try my new drink? No, thanks. I prefer my rum and coffee separate. I'm broke, Campbell. You'll have to stake me again. Come out on the veranda. I want to speak to you. Muriel looks worn out, poor child. She lives with such attention and crowds so much into life. Yes. Well, she's had a very exciting evening. Well, will you pardon me, please? Surely. Are they dancing? Shall we? I'd love to. I'll pay 20. I'll pay 20. I must get home early tonight. I want to do another chapter before I turn in. Why must you work tonight? So I can take you for a drive tomorrow, with your consent. You have it. I'm staying here tonight, you know. Some of us are invited for the weekend. Splendid. And I'm dead to the world. I'm all in. I think I'll call it a night. Don't run off like that. It's barely 12 o'clock. So long, old timer. I'll be seeing you. Good night, darling. Good night. Muriel's overtaxed herself. I'm going to take her upstairs and put her to bed. Oh, that's too bad. Of all the perverse bits of femininity, she takes the palm. Well, oh, perhaps she has overtaxed herself, as Mrs. Randall says. Ah, rubbish. You don't know her as I do. That's true. Out on the porch just now, she was all steel springs and dynamite. Then of a sudden, she goes sour and beats it in here. 
What she needs is a good rest. What she needs is a good liquor. You didn't get the stuff, did you? No. I told you that baby was dynamite. What's she got on you anyway, Gus? Well, I may as well spill it. She pinched that letter I got from Big Nose Louie. Yeah? You mean the one naming his price for knocking off them monkeys that tried to muscle in on us? Yeah. Not only that, she's got the canceled check I gave him for the job. What a sap you were. Hanging on to poison like that. Why didn't you burn them? I was just keeping them. In case? In case of what? In case Louie ever got into a jam about it and tried to leave us holding the bag. Has she got you in a spot? Listen. I'm going back there tonight, and I'll get that stuff if I have to break her neck. What's that, dear? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, sweet dreams. Mr. Holt is ready to leave, ma'am. He wishes to say good night. Oh, yes. Thank you, Cynthia. I want to thank you for a splendid evening, Mrs. Randall. Why, you're not going already. Yes, I must. It's only ten minutes past twelve. How's the usual, Mother? Oh, poor dear. She fell asleep the instant her head touched the pillow. Oh, good. I'm ready for bed myself. I think that coffee must have had some sleep-producing quality. <laughs> well, the rest of them seem wide awake enough. Oh, yes, they do. Well, now that you're our neighbor, I hope we'll see you often. Well, thank you. Good night. Good night. <laughs> good night. Good night. Tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Hey, who, who are you shooting at? It was next door at Randall's. Let's go over and see what happened. Hold, Dr. Pledger. Tell him to get here as quickly as possible. All right. If he's dead, we oughtn't to move him. How oh, did he get away from that place? Why did he come here? What's happened? <laughs> this fool here shot my brother. He was on the roof, sir. I thought he was a burglar. <laughs> Let me take a look. Oh, Mr. Holt, will he be all right? I'm afraid not. That gunshot wound was bad enough. The fall off the roof didn't help him any. Oh, he's trying to say something. Yes, darling. It, it's mother. I... I settled that Betty Kerr. I... I killed... Uh, killed that dirty Kerr? What does he mean? Oh, Larry. Take him inside. I'll see if everything's all right in the house. Come on, Jeff. Come along, Ann. Help me, Jane. Miss Maxwell. Miss Maxwell. Is he dead? Oh. How did this happen? Oh, I don't know. I came in and saw him there. I guess I fainted. Please, let, let me go to my room. I'll get someone to help you. No, no, I'm quite all right. I don't need anyone. Well, where is your room? 
just down the hall. I'll make it alone. Hey, this baby's plenty dead. Yeah, it looks like the end of Camel Snowden. Say, that's a keen-looking pig sticker. I'll bet it cost a lot of dough. Now, don't touch it, Jeff. Wait a minute. He wasn't killed with that knife. It was struck on the head. Well, somebody got it. It's all covered with blood. We'd better see who it was. for the blood on that knife. You think that guy over there done it? I don't know. It's a matter for the local police to find out. Sure. We're on our vacation. I just phoned again about the doc. He left there 15 minutes ago. He ought to be here by now. Well, there's no mystery about the case, gentlemen. Harry Randall was responsible for both deaths, unquestionably. Yeah, but we've got to make an investigation, you know. We'll see when the medical examiner gets here. Oh, hold. I was just saying that undoubtedly poor Harry was responsible for both tragedies. Uh, yes, I heard you. Uh, don't you think so? Well, I never jump at conclusions. Oh, uh, gentlemen, the famous Mr. Holden, Mr. McDougall, our district attorney. It's an honor. And Sergeant Olson of the Homicide Squad. Oh, yeah. And this is Mike Jeffries, my right-hand man. Uh, Mr. Holt was present when Harry confessed. Yes, that's right. I understand you're on vacation, Mr. Holt, so I imagine you won't care to interest yourself in this case. Oh, I'm sure that you gentlemen will be able to handle it most satisfactorily. Hello, Doc. Been waiting for you. All right. Oh, uh, Dr. Bergen, Mr. Holt. Well, let's get it over. Well, it won't take long. Your work will be merely routine. Upstairs, Doc. Nothing's been touched, gentlemen. Tough luck. No chance for fingerprints there. The carved handle won't take them. It's an odd-looking piece of hardware. That ought to be hard to trace. Harry was always speaking up outlandish things like that. All right, Doc, look him over. <clears throat> Something strange here. This man wasn't killed with that dagger. He died of a fractured skull. Well, there's nothing strange about it. Harry used the knife to kill Muriel and something else on Snowden. What caused the fracture, Doc? I don't know. Some heavy object with a rounded surface. Exactly. Well, uh, shall we go to his other victim? Uh, just a minute. I don't like the looks of this setup. Well, this ought to help, Chief. Iron pipe. It's the goods, all right. Where'd you find it? By the side of the house. Dried blood and plenty of it. Oh, may I see that in the light, please, Sergeant? Sure. Well, I guess that settles it. That piece of pipe is undoubtedly the weapon that Harry used when he killed Snowden. I guess you're right. Thanks, Sergeant. Oh, Burke. Take this downstairs to McGurn and tell him to check the fingerprints with Harry Randall. Right. Well, Holt. Any suggestions? No, gentlemen, you're doing very well. Let's take a look in the girls' room. You ready, Olsen? Well, I guess so. You like flowers, don't you, Bill? I guess so. Why? Smells nice, too. Where did this come from? Over by that window. Nice going, Irishman. What you got in there, the murderer? Some hairs from off that pipe. Oh, I get you. You're going to stuff a mattress. Hmm? <laughs> there can be no question about what caused her death. The jugular vein is completely severed. Poor Muriel. She died just as she lived, violently. You go ahead with your work, Sergeant, while I take care of this. All right.
What do you make of this, gentlemen? A chamois bag, torn open. Well, I'd say the lady carried something that she valued in it. Sure, something she kept with her all the time. Well, whoever yanked it off was in one awful hurry. Doesn't it suggest robbery? Sure it does. What jewelry did the lady have, Mr. Marshall? Oh, oh nothing but a wristwatch and a couple of rings. She didn't like jewelry. Well, haven't you forgotten a string of pearls? She was wearing them last night. That's right. A memento over days for Campbell Snowden. Cost the old boy plenty, too. Well, let's have a look around for the jewelry. The ship has sailed. This jewel box is empty. Well, gentlemen, if it was robbery, they overlooked these. I had a little difficulty getting them off her fingers. Rigor mortis, the stiffening of death, you know. Yes, I understand. Well, I guess that eliminates your robbery theory. How about the pearls? My friend, we'll undoubtedly find them in Harry Randall's pocket. It's a cinch, Sergeant. Harry Randall's fingerprints are the only ones in this pipe. Well, it looks very much as if that settles the case. All except the pearls. All right. McGurn, just to satisfy Mr. Holt, will you take a look through Harry's clothes for those pearls? I've looked all through them when it was in his room just now. And there weren't any pearls? Am I right? Not a pearl in a trunk full. Oh, never mind the pearls. Randall's our man, all right. I ain't so sure. There's something kind of funny about all this. But he confessed. What more do you want? I want to get everybody together and ask them questions. What for? For my report. Well, all right. If you want to add to the heartaches of this family by that sort of foolishness, I suppose we can't stop you. Come along. All this trouble about a string of beads. Simpson, what was you doing upstairs? I went up to inform Mrs. Randall that Mr. Holt was leaving and wished to say good night. Is there any way to prove that? Did anybody see you? Oh, for heaven's sake, Olson, what are you driving at? I just wanted to know. I can prove it, sir. I saw Mrs. Randall while, uh, while she was standing at Muriel's door saying good night. Ever see that before? Oh, no, sir. Never. Olson, stop that. He's right, Olson. Turn off the rough stuff. Oh, all right. You know everybody's story. Not one of us left our rooms all night long. That's not true. I left my room. Mr. Holt found me in Mr. Snowden's room. Jane. Yes, I, I'd fainted. You'd better explain, Miss Maxwell. I was awakened by the shot. And then I heard a heavy fall outside the house. Go on, please. Well, I, I went into the hall. Mr. Snowden's room was lighted and his door was open. So I stepped in to ask him what happened. Then I saw him flying on the floor by the knife. And you fainted? Yes. There's only one possible explanation. Harry Randall, poor lad, committed both murders. I'm convinced of it. Oh! Well, Olsen, I think we'd better go. Sure. All right. <laughs> Any deductions or theories, Mr. Holt? No, nothing. Everything run to suit you? Perfectly. Well... That'll be all, ladies and gentlemen. Sergeant. <laughs> Just a moment, Jane. I want to talk with you. I'm so glad you told us what was what about being in Mr. Snowden's room. I was very much worried about you. So was I. You were the last woman in the world I would have wanted to find there under such circumstances. Mr. Holt, will you do me a favor? A very great favor? Why, yes, if it's possible. I want you to clear Harry Randall's name of those murders. Well, I said if it were possible. What do you mean? Well, he seems to be guilty. Seems, exactly. But you couldn't think it for an instant if you'd known Harry as I did. Well, I'll admit you have the advantage of me there. I can't stand by and see them unload those awful crimes on that poor dead boy. He was innocent. You know it. And I know it. Were you still in love with him? I loved him once. But that was all over when he married Muriel. Well, why this concern about him now? It's the injustice of their trying to blacken his memory to shield someone else. All right, Jane. 
I'll see what I can do. Thank you. Well, I must go. I'll have lots to do, so you please try and get some rest. Oh, oh. love is blind. Not as blind as you'll be if I put this in your eye. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Hello, Holt. Cosmano, Mr. Holt. All right, Cosmano. Okay. Sir. Thanks. Well, I heard you wanted to see me. I have something of yours that I've been wanting to return for some time. White Carnation. My good friend Jeff found it in Mr. Snowden's room after he was murdered. I thought maybe you had dropped it. Listen, Holt. There's a million guys wear white carnations. All right. Just a passing thought. I heard you tell you you were... Coming back later. Sure I did. But I wasn't in that much of a hurry. You can take your hand out of your pocket, Cosmano, if you like. Must be perspiring by now. Hmm. Never mind my hand. Oh, I don't mind it at all. Why, right, Jeff, it's the idea of going around the house with a gun in your hand. You might frighten my guests. I was out in the garage looking for rats. Anything more, Holt? Not a thing I can think of. I guess we'll go. Right. What is it? A Mr. Holt to see you, Doctor. Holt? Oh, yes. Show him in. Doctor will see you, Mr. Holt. Well, how do you do, Mr. Holt? How are you, Doctor? Yes, sit down, please. Thank you. Well, what can I do for you? Well, Doctor, I am interested, unofficially, of course, in the unfortunate Randall affair, and I would like to get some information regarding Harry Randall. Well, I'll be very glad to cooperate with you, of course, but I'm afraid that I... I'll be truthful I'm... with you, Doctor. I'm trying to prove Harry Randall's innocence. I hope you succeed. It will take a lot of responsibility off my shoulders. Well... Was Harry Randall uh, a violent patient? Only occasionally. In fact, for the greater portion of the time, he was quite rational. Until something caused him to change. Well, had he been acting in an unusual manner previous to his escape? No, he seemed rather quiet up until about three o'clock in the afternoon, when he had a visitor. And after she left, he seemed morose and nervous. She? Uh, yes, an old friend. In fact, his former fiancée, Miss Jane Maxwell, her visit must have got him more excited than usual, because immediately after we had learned of his escape, we found that my poor old Airedale dog, Buster, dead, with his skull crushed in. Oh, that's very interesting, Doctor. Just a few moments before young Randall died, he muttered something about having gotten that cur, which was supposed to be a confession. Could be possible that he was referring to your dog. Well, I sincerely hope so, Mr. Holt. I would like to get a few hairs, if you don't mind, from your dog to compare them with some hairs found on a piece of pipe that was supposed to have killed Mr. Snowden. Yes, certainly. Come with me, please. Oh, Doctor, if it becomes necessary, I can rely on you as a witness? Yes, of course. Thank you. No, sir, man. We don't go to no murder picture tonight. Since all them killings at the Randalls, every time I hear the noise, I turn white as a sheet. <laughs> Just a doorbell, honey. You can call me back whenever it gets to after a while. Miss Maxwell in? No, sir. She won't be back for several hours. I want to leave Miss Maxwell a sample of my choreography. Yes, sir. But that ain't saying she'll buy any. <laughs> no, I mean, I want to leave a note for her. Uh, that's what I thought. Right there's her desk. Just help yourself. All right.
sorry I had to pop in on you this late, but I had to go to the Randalls first. I've been trying to help Anne. Did you get my note? Yes, I intended dropping in on you. That's why I didn't call. Bill, uh, I think I'm about to make a confession. Go ahead. I enjoy the confession now and then. Hey, mister, what's the matter with you? Many things, being a mere man. The point is, what's wrong with you? It's about Harry Randall and those pearls of mirrors that are missing. Are you interested at all? Very much. Well, on the afternoon before the murders, I went to Piermont to see Harry. I hadn't heard anything about him in months. He was so glad to see me, it was pitiful. Unfortunately, I mentioned the house party for that night. Why, unfortunately? He asked if Campbell Snowden would be there, and I had to say yes. It roused him to a fury. Why should he? Jealousy, and a string of pearls that Snowden had given Muriel. She refused to return them after the divorce. Harry called them a badge of infamy. He wanted them returned to Snowden. That's natural. Anyway, to quiet him, I promised I'd go to Muriel's room that night and get the pearls and give them to him. So I took them. Where are they now? In an inkstand at my apartment. Oh, Bill, I just can't stand the word of them any longer. And you want me to get them and keep them for you? Please, would you? Lady, my first miracle. Bill, oh, but what a relief. What must you have thought of me, though? Well, we won't go into that now. All right. Tell me, what about this big surprise of yours? Well, I've proven beyond all doubt that Harry Randall is innocent of those murders. Bill! Oh, that's wonderful. Tell me, how did you find out? Very simple. The hairs on that pipe came from Dr. Agnew's Airedale dog. There were no human hairs on it at all. <laughs> Are you going to tell the police? Oh, maybe it won't be necessary. Well, I must be going. You're going nowhere. You're my prisoner. You're staying right here and having chicken dinner with me. Oh, sounds good, but I'm afraid... Good. I... Say, Jeff can take the ugliest chicken in the world and fry it into a bird of paradise. Mm. Hey, Bill! Get that big mouth of yours open. Did you hear me, you half-baked detective? Come and get it. My mistake. Dinner is served. <laughs> that butler cook of yours certainly has an informal way of addressing you. Well, after a couple of fellows save each other's lives a few times, they generally drop formalities. Excuse me. Hello. Mr. Snowden's butler. I understand you've interested yourself in those murders. Well, I... I have some very important information to tell you about them. Uh, just a moment. Okay. Do you know Snowden's butler, Jenkins? Yes, of course. You know his voice? Certainly. Well, listen, but don't talk. Who did you say this is? Uh, Jenkins, sir. Mr. Snowden's butler. Uh, could you come here at once, sir? It's very important. Well, can't you tell me now? Not on the telephone, sir. Yes, sir. At Mr. Snowden's home. I'll be waiting, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, Pop. Now keep on being a good boy, and maybe I'll give you a smack in the nose with this. What's the idea, Joe? Just playing safe, that's all. Get the car, Jeff. Right. We'll drop you off at your apartment, Jane. Oh, please let me go with you. After all, don't you think I have a right to be curious about those murders? Very well, beautiful lady. Your slightest wish is a command. Come on. Hello, Jenkins. Good evening, Miss Maxwell. Jenkins, this is Mr. Holt and Mr. Jeffries. How do you do, gentlemen? Well, here we are. Yes, and here we are. Stick them up. And hi. All right, Eddie, frisk them. That's swell. Now we're all ready to go for a little ride. Hey, maybe we're pulling the motor. I'm knocking off a dick is taking enough chances. Well, let's call it the boss. Yeah, how can we when you get smart and pull the telephone out? The closest one is at the filling station. We'll call him from there. Okay. All right, in here. Sit down over there. 
We're going out to phone the boss. See that they behave themselves when we get back. Okay. How do you like this, Mr. Detective? Not bad. I want to like the ending much better. All I'm asking is for one of you to start something. You'd never make it, buddy. Handsome fellow, our guard, don't you think, Mr. Holt? Very. I imagine his hometown is quite proud of him. They'll soon be erecting a monument to his memory. All right, all right. to throw me out of the way, my friend. Don't be so rough about it, will you? Well, I'm sorry, Jim. I just had to get you out of the way. Are you all right? Mm-hmm. He'll never hang. Jeff, you better get ready to welcome the returning delegates. Oh, Mr. Holt, I'm so sorry about all that's happened. Now you see why I had to call you. It's all right, Jenkins. It wasn't your fault. Did you ever see any of those men before? Yes, sir, that one. He was a friend of Mr. Coletti. Coletti's? Yes, sir. He came here with Mr. Coletti a few days ago. He was driving Mr. Coletti's car. What day was that? Well, that was the day before poor Mr. Snowden passed on, sir. I remember distinctly because that was the day Mr. Snowden gave Mr. Coletti the knife. A knife? Yes, sir, a dagger. Mr. Coletti had admired it very much. What time of day was Coletti here? Well, uh, about noon, sir. About noon? Could you describe that dagger? I... Well, there it is, sir, in that photograph. Jane, Jeff, look. Say, that's the pig sticker she got it with. When was this picture taken? At a costume ball, sir. It was taken before they were divorced. Jane, part of you knows I'm taking you home. Okay. And Jenkins, I want you out of here before those men return. I was just about to suggest that, sir. And forget everything that happened. Indeed, yes, sir. Hey, boss. You don't want us to bump over that Maxwell dame, too, do you? Well, it all depends. Why? Uh, she showed up with Holt and the other guy, and we got him over at the Snowden place. You mean you left that thick with there alone with a guy like Holt? Beat it back there and wait for us. Is that Tommy gun all right? Sure. It's all right. We use the closed car. About that being Coletti and Cosmano, I'll break your Irish snake. It's them, all right. I got a good look at them when they started after us on that side road. Well, they must have started trailing us immediately after we dropped Jane. Well, you want to shoot it out with them? No, I got a better idea. nightclub was badly injured and Tony Cosmano who was riding with him was instantly killed last night when their car left the highway. Well Jeff, it almost approved the old adage that he who lives by the sword shall die by the sword. Yeah, but guys like Coletti and Cosmano don't use swords. Go see who that is. Big pop, may I see Mr. Holt? Sure, come on in. Oh, hello, Simpson. What is it? I thought you ought to know, sir. I saw someone burying these things in the garden. Is that so? Oh, scabbard for a dagger. This is interesting. Who was burying them? Mr. Marshall, sir. Marshall? Well, imagine old Marshall being interested in gardening. That's what I thought, sir. 
What's this used for? I don't know, sir. Well, when did you see Marshal Barrington? It was about three o'clock this morning, sir. It was moonlight, and I was looking out of my window. I, I'm having difficulty in sleeping, sir, after my part in poor Harry's death. I don't wonder. Hey, what are you doing? I just saw Simpson digging here. He picked up something and put it in his pocket. Well, that's strange. I... Well, where'd he go? Over to Holtz. He's still there. I'm afraid I'd better be getting back, sir. Well, I'm glad you brought these. You did the right thing, Simpson. Keep up the good work. Thank you, sir. Well, this is a pretty scuttle of suds. Very. Say, that's the scabbard for that pig sticker. Right you are, my boy. Well, what's this stuff? Hi, Hi, Olsen. I can read. Why, well, Jeff, it hardly seems possible. Well, what's it for? I'm not sure, but I'm going to find out. Oh, here we are. Hi, Olsen. Nerve depressor. Uh, this thing doesn't give much information. Give me the encyclopedia, the H's. Got him in his own room. Cracked him on the head. Well, don't worry, Gus. I'll handle everything. I am worried. What about? My wife and kid. No way to take care of them. When I croak. Oh, Gus, you ought to have money. The way Muriel's been shaking me down. Fat chance. Gus, I'll see that the wife and kid are taken care of as long as they live. But you've got to do something for me. Okay. What is it? But everything points to Coletti, Bill. First, he threatened Muriel that he'd be back. Yes? Second, you find this carnation in Snowden's room. Correction, Jeff found it. You detective. Third, you learn the dagger had been given him by Snowden that same day. And the best part of it is he tried to bump you off. 
So did Reuben Marshall. Have that off. <laughs> and don't <laughs> overlook the little matter of Marshall burying that scabbard in the bottle of hyacinth. Yes, that's right. That hyacinth played an important part in those murders, at least in that of Muriel's. And Coletti didn't have a chance to slip that to her. What is the effect of hyacinth? Well, dilates the pupils of the eyes, causes sudden weariness and a desire for sleep. That describes Muriel exactly, after she came in from the porch with Snowden. I'll uh, be polite and concede you one murder for Coletti. Thank you. But why not both? Say, this old bird must have been the champion athlete of the barnyard. He's tough, but good. I can hardly get my teeth into him. Oh, you're just getting old, that's all. That chicken was killed fresh three hours ago. That's the trouble. It should have been fried immediately before rigor mortis set in. Rigor mortis. The rigidness of death. Well, what a fool I've been. What a cluck. What a sap. That's what I've been trying to tell you all these years. Oh, Jeff, go to the back door and call Simpson. Have him come over here as fast as he can. Yes, sir. Just what might you be driving at? You'll see when I get a whack at Simpson. Oh, don't tell me you would try to put the blame on poor old Simpson. Why, well, he's no murderer. Well, don't forget, he killed Harry Randall. Well, that was an accident. Bill, you're impossible. No, I wouldn't go so far as say that. I am highly improbable. I'll admit I was in the dark. But thanks to Jeff's tough chicken, I've seen the light. By the way, Jane, Reuben Marshall has considerable political power in this community, hasn't he? Yes, why? So much so that he might be able to influence certain police officials? Well, I should think so. Mm-hmm. That ties everything up beautifully. What has this to do with Simpson, though? Gosh, that poor old fellow will probably be too frightened to talk. Mm, not Simpson. Here he is, Bill. Mm -hmm. <coughs> oh, hello, Simpson. It's nothing serious. I just want to ask a few questions. Tell me, was Coletti at the Randalls during the day before the murders? Uh, yes, sir. He came to deliver champagne for the party. Uh, what time of day? Oh, about half after 12, I should say, sir. Mm hmm He left Snowden's at noon, so he must have gone to your place next. Yes, sir. I, I recall he saying he had just come from there. Was he wearing a topcoat? Uh, yes, sir. He hung it on a nail in the kitchen at the top of the cellar stairs. He had to arrange some wine in the cellar. Oh, I see. Then anyone who came in the kitchen could have seen it. Oh, yes, sir. Tell me, uh, when Mrs. Randall was saying goodnight to Muriel, how close were you to the door? Oh, rather close, sir. Do you still remember the conversation? Oh, yes, sir. Mrs. Randall said, uh, Good night, dear. You'll feel better in the morning. Then she said, Here, Simpson. He's come to... Never mind that part. Uh, what next? She said, Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now repeat what Muriel said. Oh, I'm afraid I can't, sir. I couldn't hear what she said. Hmm. Tell me, is the Randall family at home? Why, yes, sir. Well, tell them to come over here at once. Tell them I have a surprise for them. A surprise? Oh, yes, sir. You and your surprises. Say, when he gets that look in his eyes, something's going to pop. Maybe he solved the crime already. There's no maybe about it, Jeff. I have. Thanks to that tough chicken of yours. Then I must be some good in the world after all. That chicken showed me that Muriel was dead at least three hours before Snowden. Something I should have noticed immediately. How do you know that? Because when we examined Snowden's body, it was limp. But the doctor had difficulty in getting the rings from Muriel's fingers because her body was rigid. Clever, these boy detectives. Now, I know there were two murderers. Then Coletti killed Muriel, of course. But who murdered Snowden? No, you're wrong, Jane. Coletti killed Snowden, not Muriel. Oh, that don't make sense, Bill. Such crimes usually don't. Will you stop torturing us? Tell us what happened. Well, Muriel told me that she had something Coletti wanted back. And I heard him threaten to return for it. Whatever it was, he came back and stole it. But Muriel was already dead. Why... Then she was dead when I was in her room. Oh. Well, Snowden surprised Coletti in Muriel's room and recognized the knife which had killed her as the one he had given Coletti that morning. This is getting better and better. Snowden accused Coletti of killing her. Naturally, Coletti was in a spot. And when Snowden ran into the hall to give the alarm, Coletti followed him, struck him on the head, and then dragged him back into his own room. 
Well, we found you, Jane. But why didn't he take the dagger with him? Because Coletti hoped it would pin Muriel's murder on Snowden. That's why he planted it near the body. The boy could be right. How about Muriel? Muriel was dead before I left the party, a little after 12. Oh, that's impossible. She talked with Anne just a moment before you left. Simpson heard them. Simpson heard Anne, not Muriel. That was a trick. Muriel was dead. Are you saying that Anne? It was Anne who took the dagger out of Coletti's pocket and put the hyacinth in Muriel's coffee. Oh, Bill, I, I can't believe it. Why, Anne is my friend, one of my very best friends. She's too good, too kind. And she's been a fine mother. Yes, it's pretty bad. Why would she do it? She loved Muriel. Do you think she could really love a woman who had ruined her son Harry's life? And was about to do the same to her other boy? There, there they are now. Oh, uh, Jeff. Yes. Prepare some drinks. When I tell you to serve them, bring them through the library. I get you. Bill, you won't be cruel, will you? Uh, Mr. Holt sent for us, I believe. Yeah. Oh. Hello, folks. Oh, hello, Holt. Mrs. Uh, Randall. Marshal. Hello. Welcome. How are you? Good Good thank you. And how's your target practice these days? Uh, <coughs> room for improvement, I'm afraid. I want you to step in, everyone. Sit down, please. I came over to enjoy some of Jeff's famous fried chicken, but it turned out to be tough. Yes, it does that sometimes. Oh, uh, Simpson told us you had a surprise of some sort. I... Yes, I'm afraid I have. Well, Holt, what's up? I'm sorry to have to bring it up, but it concerns the murders in your home, Mrs. Randall. Oh. I was never satisfied with the assumption that Harry Randall committed those murders. At the request of Miss Maxwell, I've done some investigating. In fact, I know definitely who killed Muriel and Mr. Snowden. The result of my investigation is quite a surprise. Oh, by the way, Holt, I have a little surprise for you. Yes? The district attorney called me up just before we left the house and informed me that Coletti had just died. Coletti? And left a signed statement confessing both murders. Why, that's almost unbelievable. <laughs> well, then I suggest that you call the district attorney. Well, no, no. No, that's fine. <laughs> Seems that I'm wrong. Well, my face has been red before. News like this is deserving of a drink. <laughs> oh, Jeff. You're calling me? Yes. Will you bring in some refreshments? Oh, of course. Well, that settles everything. Must be quite a relief to you, Mrs. Randall, to know that your son was innocent. Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. By the way, what was that surprise you had for us? Hmm? Surprise? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, Miss Maxwell and I have reached conclusion that we'll get married tomorrow and go on a honeymoon. Hold! Well, well, that's great! Oh, Jane, I'm so glad. Why, this is a surprise. <laughs> yes, isn't it? <laughs> well, congratulations. Huh? I oh, hope you'll no be very, very happy. I <laughs> <laughs> say, hold on, hold on. This calls for a double celebration. Oh, <laughs> right, right. Excuse me. Oh, Jeff, hurry up with the drinks. What's that? Oh, absolutely. Somebody speaking to me? Now, isn't that odd? Wouldn't you all have sworn that Jeff was talking to me out there? Yes. Well, never mind. Serve the drinks, Jeff. To the future, Mrs. Holt. Jane, I'm so glad for you. Mr. Holt is a kind man. I'm sure you'll be very happy. Poor Jeff, that woebegone look on his face as we started up the gangplank. <laughs> He'll get over it. 
He's going hunting up in Canada until I get back. Come in. Radio grant for you, Mr. Hall. Oh, thanks. What is it, Bill? What a shame. She was only trying to save her home and the good name of her family. Yes. It was your duty to arrest her, wasn't it? Of course, but I was sure it would turn out this way. But what if it hadn't? I was prepared for that. It's a funny world, Jane. After all, we owe our happiness to this tragedy. Hey, Bill. If there's any food left when you get through, bring it out to Lifeboat 22. Ha, 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 ha.